welcome to Girls Game Show. <laughs> Yay! I'm Christina. This is Melissa. This is Melissa. This is Melissa. <laughs> I should let you say your own name. That's why I stopped myself. But instead, you just said Melissa. This is Melissa. This is Melissa. I'm gonna call you Melissa for this whole video. This is Valor and Villainy, the minions of Mordak. Mordak. It's on Kickstarter right now. We haven't played it. We don't know anything about this game yet, except for how freaking pretty it is. Yes. Melissa was saying, and I agree, that okay. it reminds it reminds us a bit of Monkey Island. Yeah. Just all the just the shapes of the characters' faces and all the green, and I guess this guy, Monkey, or is that a monkey? I don't know. Whatever. It just gave that vibe, and I love that series, so yeah. I'm already stoked. This is not a sponsored video, by the way, so I guess we're just gonna... What we're gonna do here is is kind of learn the game. And then we're gonna play it, and we're gonna tell you what we think. It's very casual, um, right? Yeah. We don't know what we're doing right now. This is so new! <laughs> this is exciting! We're never even sitting on the couch together! I know! This is cool! Show us some of this, uh, this prototype material it's here. It's baller prototype material. I mean, look at that, like, player player card, I guess? We mm -hmm. don't know yet. I don't know. It's, I love the <laughs> vials on the side. We were liking that the paladin is a girl. Yeah, when do you see that? I mean, uh, maybe you see it all the time. Maybe I'm just sheltered, but I was just like neat, just neat. In the in the um, overview, they're you know they were putting out these cards. I didn't realize they're so big and beautiful and like look at that. That's like that's like an Amazon box thickness. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> One of us is a D and D party, right? And the other half is Mordak, and so we're who do you want to be? I don't know. A Mordak is one person. A, are okay, you the winner people? of of Rochambeau is Mordak. Okay, remind me Rochambeau is Rochambeau and then throw, or throw wow. on? Paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Okay, ready? Mm. We've done this before. Okay. Yes! One. Oh, okay, two out of two. Let's do it in sync. <laughs> yes! I'm Mordak. Hoping to get out of this game because I don't know anything about it but what I've heard about it on Twitter and like when I look through the Kickstarter page I love Dungeons and Dragons I love um, RPGs I never have an opportunity to actually uh, be a part of a campaign because I don't have the time but I want to so I'm hoping that this is the kind of game that will scratch that itch a bit I think I mean I think I agree with you pretty pretty wholeheartedly like uh, if, you've, if you've ever seen me on Twitter I mostly just talk about how much I love Dungeons and Dragons and how much I want to be playing it maybe all the time. So I really just like, I am so on board for this. Yeah, we're gonna check this out. We'll give you, we'll go and do a little bit of an overview right now. actually finished playing the game okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we can give you an overview of it okay so you start off there's different formations depending on how many different players there are Melissa read the rules and told me that this is the one for two players uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I, I played Mordak and so actually let me flip this over so this is what is this called this is the procession of horrors this Whoa. thing next to my character card so every time that we um, we go through a round of turns, this gets lower, and by the time we reach six, then I turn it over and we have the final battle. For Melissa, though, if she wants to make that final battle happen faster, she has to start revealing these cards to to find the shrine. Yeah, I'm looking for... Where did we finally found them, didn't we? Is this a shrine? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we had all three shrines. <laughs> it was rigged. <laughs> rigged. You cheated. I didn't put them out. You put them out. No, you were I was like, give me three shrines. I and thought they like, were shrines. <laughs> if I found all three shrines, I would have flipped her over before she was at full power. Yes. So this is what a turn looks like basically. It starts off with your turn. Yeah. Right? And I can, I've got a certain number of actions that I can do based on my character. I've got this little action meter here. I could move, I could melee hit someone, I could range hit someone, I could do magic, I could, um, let's see, I could spell surge. So I could get more spells. So I could either 
so the difference between magic and spell surge is I could either get more spells or I could make those spells happen, basically. Yeah. Um, and then for free, I could loot, which was get any unguarded treasure, or I could scout, which is flip over uh, adjacent tile. They have these icons at the bottom that tell you if when you turn it over, if it gets treasure and a minion on it. So that's how, like, she'll be, like, doing her thing and scouting and, oh, my God, there's a minion and some treasure. And some of the minions have an icon where it's like, it's an ambush attack. So you get attacked right away. So that was her turn, basically. She could do all those actions to try and find the shrines and try and stay healthy. But here's the thing. When it comes over to my turn, I'm like, we decided I'm kind of, Mordak is kind of like Rasputin, like, you know, sealed away. I can't hit her because I'm not on the board. I'm hiding somewhere, right? I didn't read you're the full like, legend. You're like in the nether world or like the world of pain and suffering or something weird oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, I get... On the back. There's flavor text. Yeah. I get um, to the a world of eternal and uncaring darkness is where I am. Ooh, that's so way better. So on my... It is. On my turn, I can basically use any of the spells that I have, have drawn or I can... Um, sprout minions and, and places to try and, you know, stop her from discovering the shrines and weaken her while I boost up my own health and my actions and beef up my board and get XP. So that's what my goal is, is to like kind of like get in her way and to put minions all over the board. And then after I'm done doing that, I get to play as each minion that I put on the board. So every minion that I have placed on the board and believe me, there were tons. Yeah, like let's talk about how very impossible it was for me as one person to fight like seven minions. So impossible. I killed her so many times. And every time she died, she just comes right back to this middle happy shrine spot. It's not a shrine. It's, what is it? It's, it's your Shapiro's your castle. castle. Shapiro's castle. Yeah. She comes back here with full health. So it's great. So nobody dies. You just get put back into this place right. that's not as convenient to be. Exactly. Right? So yeah, I play as the minions, I damage, 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 and at some point all the shrines are revealed, or we get to the sixth day, and then we get to duke it out. Yeah. Yeah. So we're back. We played Valor and Villainy. <laughs> minions of Mordak. What a, what a good name. It is a good name, actually, because the Minions of Mordak is Our, like, it's all that happens is Mordak's minions. It is so important to the game. Like, it's integral yes. to the... Valor, villainy, I don't know, but Minions of Mordak were there. <laughs> For real. Something that I enjoyed about it so far in our first mm -hmm. playthrough is that, like, this is a game that it's fun, it has really good energy to it, and it's something that you can play quickly, and it feels like you have played a campaign at least, maybe mm -hmm. not like a, a deep one, but you know, you've touched on it. There's story behind it and mm -hmm. you can, you have the flexibility to go deeper with that or to just concentrate on the gameplay. And like, I, I mean, I really enjoyed myself with it. Yeah. I think, I mean, I just think, uh, I just like lean into the idea that it's like very whimsical. It's very fun. It's, it's pretty light, even though maybe reading the rules the first time doesn't feel that way. So it's just, but it is like kind of a longer game too so you're just having this it's it's uh, i'm trying to figure out what i'm trying to say it's um so nice it's subs <laughs> it took us a minute to get into the rules and so i thought it was going to be more of a a kind of a slow thoughtful um strategy like really kind of chewing on the ideas but then once you got all those rules and you internalized them then it just like whipped through it it was like i do this i do this i do this i help you i don't well i assume if there were other people they'd be like i help you or i hurt you um and so it just it really clicked on really quickly see i had the same kinds of hopes for Dragonfire, but this just felt much more accessible to me mm -hmm. a question i have for you so i play Dungeons and Dragons regularly and I feel like that kind of helped me understand what the rules were getting at sometimes. Uh. Do you feel like not having played Dungeons and Dragons that was a hindrance to you for understanding the rules or like? I mean not really. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I have played enough games that I understood the basics of what was kind of going on. I didn't feel like that stopped me from enjoying myself, um, but I also wouldn't call myself a completely new gamer, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
maybe it's just the way that I framed it to help me like remember what the rules were then. And so again, so being familiar with Dungeons and Dragons is not essential, but it does give you that flavor. I loved the flavor text on the back. Mm-hmm. That oh was my so gosh. fun. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, because Mordak, we were like, oh, he's a he's a badass, and I was like, oh no, he's a sissy. <laughs> He's like, he's he has no big. He's whiny. He's so whiny. Yeah. yeah. I would definitely play this again. I would want to play it next time with more people and see how that works yes, out. Yes, definitely. Mordak playing against like many heroes. Mm-hmm. I want to, like yeah. I played a hero and I want to switch over and I want to try playing Mordak. I want to see what that's like. Yeah. Because, yeah. That's cool. Maybe we'll do like an official Girls Game Shelf video. That would be, that would be pretty cool. Like if we get a bunch of people. Yes. Yeah. I think yes. that'll be a totally different experience. But also a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's it for us. That's uh, that's our opinion of the game. We thought it was fun. We had a good time. This yeah. is not a sponsored video, so that's not a sponsored opinion either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll put the link below. It's on Kickstarter right now, actually, for the next couple of weeks. This is this is January, end of January, twenty nineteen. Don't know when this video is coming out though. Yeah, I mean, we... <laughs> no idea. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, if it's on Kickstarter, the link will be below and we'll update the description link so that you can check out, um, the Minions of Mordak whenever you want to. It's a great game. And, you know, if you want to know more about Girls Game Shelf, if you're new here, we have a blog also. It's at www.girlsgameshelf.com. We have plenty of other videos on the channel. This is our first time doing something this casual, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should let us know if you like it. Yeah, give us feedback about how you felt about this, because we, 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 yeah. I like sitting on the couch at the same time, I, though. You know, yeah, this is cozy. I like, I like nice. this. It's more, it's, having a conversation back and forth is pretty chill about it, instead yeah. of, like, the interview style, but... Hey, if it's painful to watch, just, you should tell uh, us. Let us know. All right, so that's it. Thank you guys so much. We will we'll see you next time on yeah. Ghost Game Shelf. Okay, bye. Bye.